No one could have ever imagined that the 2022 Milton High football season would have ever come to this. That after being denied on three previous attempts, eighth year coach Steve Dembowski would guide the Wildcats to the exalted stage of the MIAA Division III Super Bowl at Gillette Stadium. But in this, a season to savor, the Wildcats finally broke through. The seeds of success in this season to savor were sown a long time ago in a gut-wrenching 62-28 loss to North Attleboro in the semifinals of the 2021 MIAA playoffs. I think, I think it all started when we lost to North Attleboro last year by like 40 in the playoffs. Everyone, everyone here was there. No one ever wanted to lose like that ever again. And we haven't. It proved to be the launching point of a stirring campaign that saw a band of brothers bonded by the blood, sweat, and tears of their endeavors, spilled in pursuit of a common goal. So many questions lingered after the departure of captains Amari Marsman, Matt Paquette, Isaiah Hassel, and Chase Vaughn, a three-year starter at quarterback. Into that void stepped a quartet of leaders who bonded on the gridiron from their formative years in Milton youth football. Center Drew Kakoras, a three-year starter at center and the team's sole returner on the offensive line. Linebacker tight end K.J. Beckett, who committed to play at Bowdoin next season. Jack Finnegan, bound for St. Lawrence, who emerged as the team's dynamic triple threat at running back, cornerback, and kicker. And Owen McHugh, a dual threat at quarterback headed to Williams, who proved a steady and patient leader after waiting three years to take control as a starting quarterback of Milton's wide-open, high-octane offensive attack. McHugh gave a glimpse of the promise the upcoming season held, a harbinger of things to come, when he led the Wildcats to a victory in the Northeast 7v7 New England Championship. There was a buzz in town that maybe, just maybe, they would weave their championship magic on the gridiron at Brooks Field. With so many unanswered questions still lingering at season start, game one on September 9th featured a stern test at Brooks Field against the Situate Sailors, the defending Division IV state champions. Although they were undersized against Situate's gargantuan linemen, the Wildcats were never overmatched as they rallied from an early 7-0 deficit with 26 unanswered points. Owen McHugh led the way, throwing for three touchdowns and rushing for another, while Jack Finnegan hauled in a 27-yard touchdown catch and ran for a six-yard score in a 33-26 victory that served as a launching point for the season. I mean, it was a huge game for us. Um, obviously, they're well coached and they had, you know, a big offensive line. They were replacing some players as well. And we had a scheme that we put in for that game and they went right down the field 90 plays and scored and we went three and out and with bad field position they had a first down at the 35 yard line and um you know look you know for us and kj made a huge play identifying a screen they were trying to run the quarterback panicked turned and threw it the other way and jack picked it and then owen hit 13 straight passes and we were up 26 to 7 at halftime and i think that you know i didn't really realize it during the game until you know, later on, we're, we were reviewing the film that, I mean, 13 straight completions is quite a feat in itself. And that led us right, you know, right down the field multiple times to, to seize control of the game. The Wildcats took their show on the road in game two, the first road game of the season in a Bay State Conference clash against the host Framingham Flyers. After Jack Finnegan ran for a pair of first quarter touchdown runs of 15 and one yards, Owen McHugh turned it into a blowout with four second quarter touchdown passes in a 47-6 route of the Flyers. The Wildcats returned to the friendly confines of Brooks Field for game two, a non-conference visit from the Holliston Panthers, a perennial playoff team. Once again, Owen McHugh had the hot hand, 
running for a five-yard TD while throwing for four touchdowns. Known as Juice to his teammates, the senior QB connected twice with Michael Fulton on scoring tosses of 20 and 44 yards, found Shane Olson on a 19-yard score, and Luke Salmon on a 74-yard TD strike that followed Jack Finnegan's 55-yard interception return. It was all part of a 21-point eruption in the third quarter of a 42-6 blowout win against the Panthers. Week four proved a crucible for the 16th ranked Wildcats. Set against the emotional backdrop of the passing of the 83-year-old father of coach Steve Dembowski, the Wildcats closed ranks around their grieving coach in the battle of Bay State Conference unbeatens against the 17th ranked Walpole Timberwolves. Yeah, the kids were awesome during that. I mean, that was really tough on me, my family. Um, the kids knew about it before uh, the Walpole week. Um, you know, we knew they were really good. They had some excellent skill players. Um, it was, you know, a, a game that if we wanted to just defend the Bay State Harrogate title, we needed to win. Um, it was actually because of the way that the team season went. It was also our senior night because uh, that was our only, was our last home game in the front in the front of the schedule. So um, it was a it was a huge night. The Wildcats delivered an uplifting 28 to 14 triumph in which Owen McHugh connected with Luke Salmon on TD passes of 40 and 21 yards, while Jack Finnegan, who converted all four of his point after attempts, dazzled with a 90-yard punt return. After Walpole pulled within 21 to 14 in the fourth quarter, McHugh clinched the meaningful victory with a two-yard TD run. All of a sudden, the Wildcats were emerging as a high-flying, high-octane juggernaut. But after going undefeated in September, October would provide another crucible with three consecutive Bay State Conference road games and one idle Friday night. In perhaps their most physical confrontation of the season, the 14th-ranked Wildcats survived their first road test of October with a 29-7 victory over the host Weymouth Wildcats. The Wildcats remained unbeaten at 5-0 after Jack Finnegan scored a pair of second-half touchdowns on runs of 3 and 25 yards, lifting Milton to a Bay State Herget Division win. Milton's defense put together a pair of goal line stands as the Wildcats held Weymouth scoreless in the second half. The Wildcats traveled to Needham to face the Rockets, who drew first blood on Tate Hoffmeister's 32-yard touchdown run. But Owen McHugh and Mike Fulton would have the last word, connecting on four touchdown passes to spark a 41-point unanswered response by the Wildcats. There were lots of challenges during that time. Just the following week going to Weymouth, you know, they were a physical, hard-nosed team that always plays us with a strong run game. They want to get after the quarterback. They want to hit the receivers. And we didn't, you know, it was kind of an emotional letdown for us after the Holliston win and the Walpole win, even though it was a league game. I didn't think we played great, but we had a couple of stops inside of our 10-yard line defensively. Um, we, we got an early lead in the game. And, but it was like a sloppy game, but we ground, we, you know, we were able to grind it out um, and kind of put them away. I think it was 29 to seven. And, and then, you know, the other, you know, the, the Needham game, I thought we responded better. Obviously Needham scored first in that game too. And um, we responded that night with really good defense after that first drive. Um, and Mike Fulton had, a, you know, a career night with with uh, four touchdown catches in that game, um, you know, and and that was we pulled away and won that. And the, and the bye week was was good for the kids to get to get get some rest for us to for us to plan. Obviously, Natick on the horizon and what they, you know, how consistent they are as a program. But any concerns proved unfounded 
in a 28-7 victory against the host Natick Red Hawks, as Owen McHugh, a dual threat, led Milton's ball hawking defense that registered four interceptions after throwing a six-yard TD to Shane Olson and running for a five-yard TD in the first quarter, McHugh returned a 60-yard interception to give the Wildcats a 21-0 halftime lead. Jack Finnegan, KJ Beckett, and Liam McLaughlin also recorded interceptions, with McLaughlin scoring on a 35-yard interception return to seal the victory in Milton's regular season finale. When the power rankings were revealed at the end of the weekend, the 7-0 Wildcats had earned the top seed in Division III, and more importantly, the right to host the first round of the Division III playoffs. Jack Finnegan was a one-man gang for top-seeded Milton in its first-round matchup against number 16 Minishog in a Division III first-round matchup at Brooks Field. The senior captain factored in all three phases of the game, with rushing touchdowns of 10, 71, and 1 yards, an interception, a 23-yard field goal, and five PATs in Milton's dominating 46-21 victory over the visiting Falcons. When Minishog stunned the Wildcats by taking an early 7-0 lead on a 74-yard touchdown catch by tight end DJ Johnson, Finnegan made the Falcons pay by going on a personal 24-point scoring tear to expand Milton's 8-7 lead and put it out of reach by halftime, 32-7. I think it's always big to have you know, as high a seed as possible. In the way the tournament is set up now, you want to be a top four seed so that you can have the two possible home games. So us getting the one was was big. And then when you saw how the seedings were and you were like, oh, the, the defending champion Marblehead is a possible second round matchup. You know, you, you knew that basically anybody from one to eight had a good enough team to win the tournament. So it was it was definitely a year where okay we got the first win against Menchuk Regional at home and it was you know it was a good a good win for us but it was like okay th like this is for real. The top seeded Wildcats next hosted the eight seeded Marblehead Magicians, the reigning Division Three state champions, led by all-purpose back Connor Cronin, a six foot two inch, one hundred ninety pound wide receiver linebacker. Against a team with which Dombowski was all too familiar with from his playing days at Swampscott High, the Wildcats faced an unfamiliar situation after trudging into the locker room trailing 20 to 10 at halftime. I thought we were we were just thinking too much and you know sometimes I you know we didn't talk a lot about the seeds as much as we talked about the teams we were playing but you know the the kids know they know the seeding they know that you know it, it doesn't mean you know, nothing is going to fall exactly as it's projected and every projection is, you know, a metric that can be twisted in any way you want to twist it. Uh, I just said we got to attack. The Wildcats, though, responded with 14 unanswered points in the second half on Owen McHugh's 45-yard touchdown pass to Mike Fulton in the third quarter and Jack Finnegan's one-yard plunge in the fourth. Meanwhile, Milton's defense rose up and held the Magician scoreless in the second half of a 24-20 win that propelled the 9-0 Wildcats to a neutral site showdown against the Hanover Hawks in the Division III semifinals. The Wildcats were back to where their journey ended unceremoniously a year before. Haunted by that stinging setback to North Attleboro, Milton now had to focus its task on the Division III semifinal matchup against the four-seeded Hanover Hawks in a neutral site contest at Weymouth High. The Wildcats surged to a 20-8 halftime lead on Owen McHugh's first half scoring tosses of 19 and 29 yards to Michael Fulton. The Hawks, though, erupted for 22 second half points and took a 30-26 lead.
Jack Finnegan once again emerged a hero with a pair of touchdowns, including a go-ahead four-yard touchdown run. But the Wildcats got equally heroic performances from unheralded players such as Liam Faraday, whose blocked field goal prevented Hanover from scoring on its first possession. Harrison Hinkle, whose blocked punt led to a Finnegan TD. And junior linebacker Ben Caledonia, whose game clinching interception with 3.01 left propelled the top seeded Wildcats to their first ever Super Bowl berth at Gillette Stadium. But before Milton could begin plotting its course to Foxborough, there was unfinished business left to be settled against Thanksgiving Day rival Braintree at Brooks Field. The Super Bowl bound Wildcats entered the 92nd meeting against their Thanksgiving Day rivals from Braintree with so much on their plate and so much at stake. There was an undefeated season, an outright Bay State Conference title, and retention of the George Ramacordi Trophy for the fourth year in a row, all on the line. So there was no way any of Milton's starters were going to sit idly by and sit this one out. Determined to go out with a bang in their final Brooks Field appearance, the Wildcats shellacked Braintree 42-0. Owen McHugh threw four touchdowns connecting with Dylan McKenzie on scoring tosses of three, four, and 10 yards. The only hiccup though was a first quarter ankle injury suffered by Jack Finnegan when he got spun around fighting for extra yardage on a 23 yard run. It proved a momentary scare as Finnegan returned to the game and scored on an 11-yard touchdown run and intercepted a pass. It helped the Wildcats feast on the Womps before setting their sights on their Super Bowl date against six-seeded Wakefield and a shot at a bigger prize, the Division III State Championship. Super Bowl Saturday dawned cold and chilly and wet as wind-swept rain pelted Gillette Stadium. But it did little to dampen the enthusiasm of hundreds upon hundreds of Wildcat fans who descended upon Foxborough. You know, you talk about Wildcat Nation and the town and the support. You know, obviously since I arrived in 15 that first year, we had, you know, people just flocked to the games and then to see the pictures and look up in the crowd, we had the most fans of any team at Gillette that weekend. Um, so that was like, wow. A sense of civic pride permeated the crowd from former youth coaches. So proud of my son, Patrick. I had a nice conversation with him before he left the house and I just said, you know, leave it out all up, leave it all on the field. And to fellow Milton students from the class of 2023, it's really cool to see because like we've gone to school with them since like some of them since like kindergarten. So it just amazing to see how we evolved all the way to the Gillette. It's really fun. To the mothers. No team. They got grit. Like the worst, best grit. You know that. They're just they dig in. They don't give up. So last year when they were here for the prom, they, you know the seniors actually all said to each other, "We'll be here again next December." This is a, an amazing team, and they have an amazing group of coaches that have led the way. Much of Milton's success under Dembowski had been rooted in the continuity of his staff, which included assistants Dan Jarbo, Tom Phelan, Mike Lopez, Andrew Hunt, Mike Donovan, Zach Mazzarella, Jack Clifford, and Dumick Mattire. The pundits projected that the Division III showdown between top-seeded Milton and number six, Wakefield, which, amazingly, reached the final playing just 12 players, would likely be the most entertaining of the eight Super Bowl matchups. When the combatants met at midfield, they did not disappoint.
Wakefield appeared to be hamstrung by a manpower shortage, with a roster that had relied all season on just 12 players. Milton, meanwhile, had developed a roster teeming with depth and talent. But as the Wildcats soon discovered, Wakefield and its quarterback, Javin Willis, was not to be overlooked or underestimated. After Wakefield drew first blood to take a 7-0 lead in the second quarter, Milton mustered a response. But uncharacteristic mistakes by the Wildcats opened the door for Wakefield. By halftime, the Wildcats had found themselves trailing on the scoreboard. It was not, however, an unfamiliar scenario for Milton, which had trailed in all three of its previous playoff games. Twice in its Super Bowl final against Wakefield, the Wildcats trailed by as many as 14 points. Both times, though, the Cats clawed back. But each time, Wakefield responded with big plays of its own. With time winding down and Milton trailing by 14 points, McHugh mounted a critical scoring drive. With Jack Finnegan punching it in from short yardage to pull the Wildcats within eight. As they had all season, the Wildcats lined up for Finnegan's extra point in their swinging gate formation. This time, Dembowski boldly opted to go for a daring two-point conversion on what amounted to a flea flicker pass to a wide open KJ Beckett that caught everyone by surprise, including Wakefield. The perfect execution of the play left Milton trailing by six points with almost two and a half minutes left in the game plenty of time for another miraculous comeback. But when an onside kick attempt fell just two yards shy of traveling the required 10, Wakefield's successful recovery took the wind out of Milton's sails. The Wildcats' fate was sealed when Wakefield took possession and held on for the Division III state championship. And while the outcome of the game did not turn out the way Milton had scripted it, the card-carrying members of Wildcat Nation took pride in the thrilling once-in-a-lifetime journey this football team had taken them on. Postseason accolades came pouring in for the Wildcats, who finished at 11-1 and ranked number 12 in the Boston Globe's final top 20 football poll. Among the Bay State Conference All-Stars included K.J. Beckett, Drew Kakouras, Liam Faraday, Mike Fulton, Liam McLaughlin, Luke Salmon, Griffin White, a distinguished class 
led by Bay State Conference co-MVPs Jack Finnegan and Owen McHugh. In the end, this merry band of brothers, who along the way forged an inseparable bond, connected not only with each other, but also with their coaches, fellow students, teachers, administration, and community at large, all of whom reveled in a season that brought more joy than sorrow. In retrospect, it will always be remembered as a season to savor. You know, I think when you combine hard work and talent, academics, um, good kids, uh, community support, it, it was just, you know, it's a special experience for those involved. And, and then you got to kind of play it out. You know, it's, uh, there are a lot of great teams and only one can win. And you, got, you can't be afraid of that. And uh, we had a wonderful journey and it was, uh, you know, filled with experiences that hopefully, you know, the kids will remember the rest of their lives.